Welcome back everybody to RimWorld. In between now and last episode, I, I removed some mods from the load order, specifically the more furniture mod, because it's actually included or at least a lot of the furniture is very similar to what's already present in some of the other mods. So I had to do a little bit of rebuilding here. You can see they're still working on like a couple of little bits of chairs here and I've had to replace some of the lab. We lost a lot of floors as well. That was kind of the main thing here. But it's given us time to finish off the multi-analyzer research, the advanced multi-analyzer research. So we can now basically progress on to, where is it? We've got multi-analyzer, there it is, nice. So we can now progress on to very much the end game style thing. So we can take a look at the genetic rim stuff. We can take a look at, well, I mean, honestly, the rest of the research tree entirely. Like I said, probably not going to touch too much of the cybernetics or the cybernet or the glitternet, whatever it's called stuff. Just simply because I feel like that would do for a whole new series of its own thing as it seems way more complicated than I actually originally thought it was so let's get on with a little bit of lab expansion obviously yesterday we are uh, or i say yesterday whenever it was when we last played we expanded into this massive area which is gonna let us do all of our crazy uh extra genetic engineering stuff we've got our organ bats we'll be able to put down some cloning bays we'll be able to put down all sorts of uh, weird little tinker stations as well so for those of you who haven't seen the genetics mod it is massive and adds a lot of new workstations there's quite a lot to it so we do need this this kind of large area we'll try and get onto that today hopefully we should have uh we should be able to get onto that in no time at all actually so let's put down stuff with the bonus little research buildings we've got here so it is just the advanced multi analyzer there's two advanced components fine um um, do we not have any? That's kind of a surprise, to be honest. Uh, make five advanced components. No one's doing it. Why? Glinx should be doing it. Glinx, what the hell are you doing? Uh, Glinx, what, what are you up to, my friend? Mining in a quarry. Uh, why are you doing that rather than... Can I make extra frame material? I don't care about extra frames. Try it now. What the hell's going on there? Can I make five advanced... Oh, we're out of materials? Really? So advanced components need 15 steel, 5 plastic, steel, 3 gold. Um, I can tell you right now, Chief, from just looking at what's on the floor, that that is not true. So, I don't know what's going on there. Has it got, like, a radiant? No? Oh, no. <laughs> That's not a good sign, is it? Let's remove that, and let's just start again. So, make a parts components. We'll put that at the top. We'll just we'll just do it with a... Oh, maybe we didn't have enough to make five or have... No, but we do, though. I don't know. Don't worry about it too much. So, let's say do until X, and then we'll say on pause when we've only got five left. Or we'll do it until 15, and then pause at seven or something like that. Um, just in case there is something that requires, say, five advanced components or four advanced components to build. There we go. Okay, so make advanced components. That should do that. Now, let's try it again. Glinks, can you, uh, can you actually make some need materials? No, you don't, though. 15 steel, 5 plus steel, 3 gold. Um, I'm almost certain, just based on what my eyes can see right here, that we have enough for that. So, what the fuck is going on? Um, right, that's concerning, isn't it? Make advanced component. 15 steel. Need, uh, need components. No, you don't. You don't, okay, bear with me. Let me try and work out what the hell's going on here. Oh, he's fixed it. Thank God. Okay, so I think it was just an issue with the... I don't know why they couldn't grab it off of the floor, but there we go. Um, now that I've built these new shelves and actually moved that as a stockpile, they're able to do it, which was... God knows what was going on there. Anyway, once we've got this all set up... I'm also building a little uh, assembly wrench there, by the way, for just churning out more components. Maybe the, uh, uh, the, the crafting bots or whatever they are can use those. So once we've got this all set up and ready to go, I think we can basically just blitz on with our genetic research. So there is, obviously, like I've said before, there's, there's an actual endgame to this that will allow us to finish the campaign, essentially. So let's take a look at, uh, let's see if I can find it again. It's the Arcotech Research, I remember, is what it's called. Um, I just want to find the, I'm not looking for anything in particular, just there we are, the genetic engineering stuff. So we can sort of see where we need to start. So animal enrichment is the first step. Then as we go through it, you can see there's like megafauna, alpha, uh, archaeo, genetic engineering, whatever that says, dinosaurs. Oh, soon yeah right um insects reptilians humanoids hybrid implantology sounds quite fun then you start getting some more advanced stuff and then of course eventually you've got your arcotech project there which allows you to build the big old the big old centipede thing which is um the end game i think that actually allows you to finish things off so i guess we'll just sort of queue up everything huh um how do you want to start this then can we uh what, what is it called genetic rim if i type in here genetic rim do you think it will do you think it'll bring up just the mods that were are under genetic rim um, it has, but not really. Um, we've got... Oh, yeah, no, it has brought up all the genetic rooms, so that's quite nice. So, genetic engineering, I assume, whatever that is. Yeah, that's also part of it. Cool, so we'll start with that. That seems like a sensible one. Um, and let's put that back. So, there's also age drugs, which is genetic rim, allows you to... Um, I think I talked about this before, but essentially allows you to feed them to animals and grow them quicker. So, they're actually capable of producing, you know, uh, milk and things like that much sooner. Okay, let's also go with animal enrichment after that. So, we've got genetic engineering followed by animal enrichment. That allows us to edit humans and animals. After that, I mean, it's really down to us where we want to start here. So we've got alpha animals on megafauna. We do have some alpha animals, don't we? In, uh, in our zoo right now. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, the big mycoi colossus is 
an alpha animal. I will just double check. It's either it's either the megafauna or the alpha animals mod. If I can, oh, it's called spider. It's me clicking on it. Like I don't want to look at this fucking spider. Um, alpha animals, right? Cool. And then what about like the raptor shrimp? Because I think it'd be kind of cool to crossbreed trasher with that. Also, alpha animals. Great devourer is uh. Jurassic Rimworld. Okay, no, that was Storicosaurus. Hang on. Great Devourer. Shangri-La. There we are. Um, also Alpha Animals. So I think it's, it's a fairly safe bet to go for Alpha Animals to start off with here. Just because we have a load of those. I want to I wanna breed Trashy into being a Great Devourer Raptor Shrimp hybrid. Sorry, Trashy. You knew it was coming, though. Um, so let's go for Alpha Animals. And then Megafauna. I, I don't know exactly what the Megafauna ad mod, mod adds in hindsight. Um, honestly, don't know. Megafauna Chicken? Megafauna Muffalo? We just make like a massive muffalo, maybe. I'm not sure, but we might build those. So the incubators are the things you can actually build that will hatch into those animals. This is what we can use to basically grow other animals for the zoo, along with, you know, our, our other dinosaur building benches. Now, as far as I remember, this is also very useful. So after that, we'll go through the advanced genetic engineering stuff. That allows us to extract particular genes that allow us to, to obviously do things with them, synthesize different things there. Cool. Okay. Um, advanced mechanite. Ooh. That sounds cool. A little bit complicated. Let's, let's start with that. Let's not get too ambitious here. I think even getting that before the end of today, it's going to be a fairly large task. And then eventually, of course, we're not going to just finish the game when we get that research. Obviously, there's a lot of other stuff to take a look at here. But I'll, I'll let you guys vote on when we're content with things. But I'm very, very interested to see quite how far we can uh, mutilate poor old Trashy. We're really going to start going on quite big with the war crimes. So is there anything I can actually build in this lab to start with that would help out? Um, I guess there's a load of sterile tiles in here, right? Because it is going to be another research lab, essentially, or at least a lab where I guess we'll be doing operations and, and gene therapy and things like that. So um, have we got enough to be able to build that already? Let's go for... Look for... Check sterile tiles. Uh, Yeah, actually, we've got way more than enough. Okay, cool. Good, good, good stuff. Let's get all of this replaced then. We'll start off with this little lab over here. Oh my god, is that a bridge? Damn it. Um, So we'll do all of that stuff. Then I guess we'll move into this room as well, seeing as this was meant to be a lab. That way, if we do get any more prisoners, it just makes it easier to operate on them, doesn't it? That's definitely not war crimes. All right, so we'll, let's put all of this just there. Okay, that's fine by me. And then we'll uh, probably replace all these walls eventually as well. Maybe, might even just remove these walls entirely and turn it into one just massive secret research lab. Now, there were a lot of these comments on yesterday's episode as I say, I keep saying yesterday's episode, I'm not used to doing these non-daily reward episodes, but on the last episode, uh, you guys pointed out that it's actually Mechanite, because of course we've got two different Mechanite Slurry, we've got Mechanite Slurry added by this mod here, um, whatever this mod here is, and then the other mod as well. So, one is with a capital S, one is with a lowercase s, so there was me trying to queue up the lowercase s Slurry, when instead we need capital S Slurry. So it says here that apparently we can make Mechanite Slurry at the machining table. Right, okay, so I'll have to take a look at that one then. Uh, extract mechanites. Oh, so maybe it is just extract mechanites then. Um, so machining table. Now, we've got the... Oh, extract mechanites. My god, there it is. Okay, um... And I assume that will give us the slurry then. Let's see what the output is. Um, five tons of mechanite, capital slurry. That's what we're after. Okay, um... Here's the problem though. Do we need a mechanite corpse to do that? Just one corpse? What do you mean by that, Chief? Just one corpse though. Um, this is evolved meat as well. Oh, okay. Um, so I'm gonna say do forever and then maybe suspend that one. So does that mean we actually need mechanite corpses to be able to extract it from? I have no idea. Um, damn it, that could be a problem. Okay, uh, we've got to wait until we get more mechanoids in that case. I, I can't think of any way of... Maybe there might be some on the map. I'm, hang on, that's a good idea. So, so we can occasionally get those wandering um, mechanite mechanoid invasions as thrombos. That's not really what we're after right now. Yeah, there's nothing in our area anyway. That's quite annoying. What if we go over here? There might be something at like this uh, incentive message. There could be like mechanoid guardians or something like that over there. Said to contain a hidden loop. It could also be a trap from the Go Explore mod. Um, and there's also outpost. Gives us advanced power cover, but it's 11 enemies, so that's just going to be your sort of basic uh, some some faction anyway. Um, the center of enlightenment, apparently. We could go and check this out in the hopes that there are some mechanoids there that we can potentially extract. If I'd have known that, I would definitely not have disassembled any mechanoids this entire campaign. That's really frustrating. Okay, so that might be a little bit of a damper on our evolved organs anyway, because that's, that's what we were trying to do it for, right? We were trying to grow these um, evolved limbs. So we need the 20 slurry capital S and the 35 humanoid protein. Damn it, that could be a problem. But hey, look at this. He's about to finish off our cloning bat. Very nice. Okay. Um, shall we clone Trashy? I think we should clone Trashy. That way, if we ever get into another Trashy situation, we can uh, bring the poor boy back to life. Oh, and these cloning vats, as I recall, work faster from being in a sterile room, don't they? So this actually will work out pretty well. We should put, like, a sink in here as well so people can wash their hands, obviously increase the room cleanliness. Anything like that would help out quite a lot. 
importantly, I should point out, look at what we've got going on over at the Jade Hotel. We've got actual visitors here willing to pay 100 silver per night. So this is going to be a cash cow for us. I've got to try and work out what is a good price for it. So we know they're willing to pay 100 silver. Why don't we try like uh, 120 silver? See if they're willing to, to pay that price for those beds as well. There's a few people here. They seem, are they, are they happy? Are they, are they good? Uh, are things, uh, excuse me, Ren, how are things doing? Um, hospitality. Oh, not very good at all. Maybe we should try and entertain him. Uh, let's try and entertain some of our guests here because they seem to be in a pretty shitty mood. And maybe when he wakes up, he'll be in a much better mood. Maybe. Ah, oh, there we are. Gorgeous environment. Plus 15. Look at that. Luxuriantly comfortable. You're welcome. Unbelievably impressive rec room. Impressive dining room. The dining room itself being this giant hall over here. We should probably put down some. Uh... There are no cooking bots, are there? But at least some sort of. I don't know. Food for these poor guys to eat. Wow, this is. Uh, this is doing pretty well. Don't eat in reception. What are you doing? That's not for you guys. But hey. Jade Hotel, actually done. The ultimate dream that we've been building for so, so many episodes. Finally open for business. It's got the plumbing. It's got the sewage treatment. It's got everything you could ever want. This is very nice. And obviously, they're apparently willing to pay for it. We'll just keep tweaking the price in between episodes. See quite how much money we can make from this. Hopefully, we'll make more than just 100 silver per person moving in. Because that's not very good. How many people we got in there right now? So, we've got two spare beds. Maybe we might get small visitors turning up later on. How are we doing with that multi-analyzer then? Um, a yeah, Aiden, what's going on? Oh, he's still building it. Nice, okay. So that gives... I don't know what the research bonus is from this. Uh, doesn't actually say. We'll have to wait for it to be built. Then, hopefully, if we get everybody... So who are our other researchers as well? Let's put Trashy and Spleens. I need to reorganize this work tab. Yeah, the badge mod I might actually remove because I always end up just clicking on them to, and or just memorizing what it is they do anyway. Um, right, so we also want Trashy Spleens. And who, who are we missing here? Who was our other researcher? Am I going crazy? Oh, Jew. I mean, actually had them, like, properly clicked on there like a fool. What are you guys doing, if not researching? Are they coming over to the research? You're consuming a bottle of stew, after which I assume you're going to be researching. Let's keep a close eye on things. Just make sure things are working as intended here. How long does it take to eat stew? This is speed four for us right now, by the way. Basically, average room world speed. It's, it's pretty unreal how much we've managed to slow this game down. It's quite impressive, if anything, that it hasn't, especially given that it hasn't crashed at all. We haven't had any errors. We haven't had any issues. Right, researching. There we go. Nice. So we've got the whole squad working over there as well. These guys can still talk. That's the important thing. We've got to make sure John and Trashy can still have their conversations while at work. How are we doing with this? Ah, there we go. Right on cue, Aiden's over here finishing off our last little bit of, uh, last little bit of, bit of uh, research building, I guess is the best way to phrase it. Right, okay. So let's take a look at what research we actually get from that. Uh, 25%. Oh, that's a lot. That's that's a huge amount. How many of those can we put down exactly? I assume it's just one per... Yeah, it is one per structure. You can see the little red line there. Um, basically where my cursor is right now. Okay, that's fine. That works out really, really well. That, that's a really nice little bit of uh, research speed bonus. So, what are we looking at? 1,200 on that one. That's going to take no time at all to get through. Hey, we might be able to start on the trashy, uh, the trashy experiments later today. This is great. So, with this then, we still need the slurry. I don't know if... Th this is the only problem, right? I don't know how exactly how we're expected to start the... Um, I wonder if there's a way I can mod it so that it can both slurries are like interchangeable or something like that. Otherwise, we are in a little bit of trouble here. Because otherwise, we've got no way to actually progress on all that research we spent episodes and episodes doing. It's basically amounted to nothing because we don't have any of the slurry. Like, we have no mechanoid corpses lying around to actually use the slurry with. So I had a bit of poking around in the in the files here just to try and find a way to actually extract these. Now, according to the allowed deaths in the mod folder, in theory, we should be able to shoot a crafting bot and extract the mechanites from that. Now, it's not the nicest thing to do to our loyal crafting bots, but it might actually be the only way to do it. I'm just going to double check that this is actually the case. So we're going to get uh, Dominic here to go and club a cleaning bot or a crafting bot, whatever this thing is. Then we're going to see if we can extract the mechanoids from it. So how exactly am I going to do it? They shouldn't repair it automatically, I don't think. You have to, you actually have to go to the pad there and say, um, oh, there we go. Nice work. Okay, that's it. If you could, you could just kill that for me, that would be, if they just explode. Uh, oh, well, that's no use. Um, well, there goes my plan, huh? Shit, that's really annoying. Okay, uh, let me go back to the drawing board and see if there's, there's got to be a way we can craft something to extract mechanites from. Otherwise, we are, we're doomed with this mod. Okay, I've added it to the quarry. I mean, there's no other way we're going to be able to get this otherwise, and the series is going to be over before we get another bloody mechanoid drop pod at the rate we're going right now, because apparently it's, it's nothing but peace in our times. So I've added a very, very small 3.7% chance per mining or quarry operation, 70% chance of failure from the quarry, don't forget. So it's actually a very, very low chance we'll get any of just getting a small amount of mechanite from it we're mining up out of the ground because w why not why not at this stage huh we've, we've got to find some way to do it so we can at least test out these mods so that's that's what i think we'll we'll just do for the time being 
if it ends up being way too OP, obviously, I'll I'll tweak the numbers accordingly. I just want to at least see... Well, we'll try and have this as just as something we could build up over a long period of time to grow some of these limbs to see what they can do for us. But I don't want it to be like a, a way of us churning out and, and like really making everybody and their mother evolve limbs, huh? Just as a nice little way to get a little, little fun little bonus there. And we've got loads of people working in the quarry, so eventually we should get something, huh? Okay, so the advanced multi-analyzer is done. The lab is being built quite nicely. Someone just laid an egg. I won't ask questions. It's unnecessary at this point. There's too much weird shit going on. So I think we need to... What uh, Next step then is to actually check out if we've got any of the genetic buildings built right now. Uh, oh, wow. Holy shit, there's a lot to see. What the hell is a gene pod? Oh, they've made it so the buildings rotate properly. Thank you. Okay. So, wow, there's a lot of stuff. This is much more complicated than... than uh, the one I played last time, they did a really good job with the new art assets as well. Paragon Serum. Um, I don't know what that is, but it sounds incredible. Okay, there is a lot of stuff to build all of a sudden. This is where our real war crimes come from. So let's build what nutrient fat requires... Um, used by genetic experiments will increase the work speed when placed in a dramatic... Ah, oh, right, okay, so it's our multi-analyzer for genetics. So this needs organic pulp. Now, organic pulp, I believe we can make from the refinery, can we? Nutrient solution, protein, mash, organic... Oh, no, we could organic pulp we make from the pulper. Yeah, I've got, I've got to try and get my, get my brain back in gear for this monk. It's been a long time since I played with it. So... I guess we'll say this corner of the lab can be for, like, research and production. This area down here, maybe operations. This area for cloning, something like that. Um, okay, so let's build a... Po Actually, no, we want this to be as close to the door as possible so they can bring the resource over from the stockpile. Um, fine, in that case, we'll put the... We're going to put the pulper right there. So pulper, uh, and then the rest, I believe, require... Okay, so we'll try and build anything that doesn't require... Um, the organic pulp. So we'll put down a gene pod as well. I think it's very cool. Let's put that. Uh, let's put that as close to the door as possible. You know what? You know I'm going to put it in the center. Put it right in the center there. Gene extraction table. Again, we can build that one without much of a loss. I'm trying to keep things all ran together as well, so we can put down this uh, nutrient vat for apparently some work speed bonuses there. Gene recombinator requires organic pulp. Same with the tissue growing vat. Paragon serum extraction table. What the hell is that thing? Okay. Um, if we put that, I'm going to move this over very, very slightly. Not too far, but very slightly over this way, just so we can try and pack more things into this very small area right so let's put that one down just here and we've got the animal enrichment center which i think if we put it that way around we should be able to fit both of those and they should be able to still walk between that too i think that works this is going to be uh it's going to be fairly interesting then the second we've got some pulp we'll start putting down these other buildings too let's take a long time to get all this stuff built maybe i shouldn't have gone so you know maybe i shouldn't have gone so balls to the wall with this, these floors uh, let's cancel some of these floors to start off with otherwise our our constructors our bots as well they're going to be so sort of thinly spread I think for the time being, let's not go too crazy with the scope of this. So I'm just going to build straight across there and, and use this as a sort of minor research lab, our little genetics lab to start off with. Then we've got room for expansion as and when we need it, as we want to go over there. Away oh, and reach level 20 construction again, by the way. Um, then that way we've always got this room for expansion, but it's not going to take ages and ages and ages to build it all up. So along with that, the one thing I also wanted to do here, well, I want to build a bath up to that, but I said yesterday we would, uh, or whatever last episode was, I wanted to build the actual dinosaur theme park, funnily enough. So why don't we start actually thinking about working on some of those. So let's go over to the fences. Um, honestly, I think the high security fence will make the most sense, and then we'll just sort of put down some little enclosures for our dinosaurs here. We will have to bear in mind all of the, uh, the obviously the food is going to be the big problem here. Sort of what animals get what food. So, let's go for, I mean, I quite like this entrance area, but it, it, mean, it being fucking mud and swamp is kind of a pain in the ass. Um, where do we want to start putting things then? Uh, so we'll, we'll just build out from the entrance way then, I guess. So I'll, I'll put down a little enclosure, just... Just what about, like, right here? What if we put down a, a, an enclosure right here for our muffalo or something? Because that would make the most sense to have those guys in a, in a sort of convenient... We don't need a high security fence for muffalo. That's ridiculous. I think it would be a safe bet to say that we'll need the steel high security fence for our great devourers and our raptor shrimp, given that they are massive and kind of spooky. So we'll do something like... Um, I want to build it over this mud, but you can't, can you? So this whole area is basically locked off. So annoying. Um, okay, so we'll do something, we'll, we'll try and keep, to get as much room as possible as we can out of this, obviously. Um, do something like that, that'll do. Just, just try and make the most of this tiny little space that we do happen to have. So that way, our guys have enough room to run around in. If we do end up with a crazy breeding program like the Storicosaurus, it's not gonna matter. If they, we, we're not, they're not gonna have a 10,000 dinosaurs crammed into tiny little areas. I know that's war crimes, but we're only in it for war crimes against, you know, humanity and not against animals here. Right, so we'll do something like, um, 
Something like that will be fine, I think. So we'll try and keep them relatively, uh, relatively square shaped, he says. I mean, obviously, with with, with well, at least one square side. That way we can, or I should say, side with the right angle. That way, at least we can build a lot of them together and have sort of paths in between. We can also use the viewing areas. So the viewing areas are quite cool in the sense they don't really do anything, but they do give recreation. So putting one of those, I guess, what, what are we looking for here? The viewing dome. Putting one of those in the middle of the Great Devourer one, I think, is kind of cool. And then... um. How, which way around does that go? I guess we put the, the, the viewing dome entrance here. Okay, that's fine. We'll put that one there. And that way people can actually go in and, and have a look at the damn things. Info board. That's a great plan. Let's put down an info board for our guests so they can actually see what their... Uh, what's that one? Small one? Oh, that, that's what you put in your in front of your enclosure, right? Let's put that one there. These are our muffalo. They're very nice. Uh, these are big old dinosaurs. Please don't fuck with them because they will eat you whole. That's why it's called the Great Devourer. This would be like your map. You are here, etc. Very good. Okay, this this works fine. Um, concrete dinosaur fence. We've got like dinosaur security benches. We've got beacons. Oh, water. Perfect for the watering holes. Ah, uh, we could just put down a little bit of uh, a little bit of a little bit of a watery watery zone from our for our devourers and whatnot. I don't think they really need it, but I'm gonna put it down regardless. There we are. Nice little uh, nice little place for them to get some fluids and whatnot. Okay, so I think we'll have our great devourers in this in this area, and then we'll we will set up a se separate one for the raptor shrimp, given that you know it's meant to be a zoo and all that. Okay, now we've got to manage a new area. This is gonna take a long time to get all of this set up, but I think when we do, I think it'll look pretty goddamn cool. Where the fuck are these animals conga lining to? Excuse me. This is no this is not the point of the zoo. Turn around. Where are they going? What I'm restricted. What you think that means you can go wherever you want? Where are they going? Up through around here. Uh, just to here. You just all want to go to this particular corridor. Nah, you're okay. I think I need to make like a zoo area. That's pro probably part of the issue is I deleted the um, Storicosaurus and barn areas. So I think they're just very much lost right now. Um, caravan safety. Can we move that up to like there? So we've got cleaning areas. Then we've got uh, our zoo area. So let's go new. I'm going to rename that zoo uh, holding. And I think we'll just say that can be around the area whereby um, the the food dispensers are. That makes the most sense. So holding area, let's just do, let's do like that. There you go. You guys can have this this big zone here. Well, that's kind of in the great of hours now. But you know, you can sort of get what I'm you get what I'm thinking here. This should stop them just randomly all running to the corridor of mystery and parties. Apparently, right? Get rid of that. And then if I so just got to go to every animal right now and say, oh my god, look at these fucking aero fleets. They can all die. Okay, the, the husky can go wherever it wants because it's a husky. Everything else, everything else can stay in this zoo. I don't want aero fleets running around my base eating my meals. There we go. Okay, look, tidal wave of animals all coming back to the same area, right? So, great of our carnivores. These guys will need themselves a. Um, or just one of these close to the viewing zone so that the people can actually see them, see them eat and see them have a nice swim. Or what? What is that? We got that great of our egg fertilized. Oh God. Oh, there's a couple of them too. Oh shit, that's kind of cool. So stop pause now. Let's, let's actually put these in inside the the area then. Um, let's go critical, clear all, and allow. Oh, let me just do that and then clear all. Uh, great devour egg fertilize. There we go. Nice and nice. And then if we haul those, man, there's two of them. This is so good. We've, we've got ourselves a little great devourer breeding program, which I'm sure our enemies will be very pleased to hear. I like a little, little notice board there as well. We do need to build paths and everything around that, but I think focusing on the whole uh, genetic research lab should probably come first. It's actually almost done. It's, it's almost done here. We've, we've only need a little bit more. Oh, man, this looks so much better than the old art they used to have. Basically, the old art, I remember, before the genetic room would just be this. You see, like, this weird claw thing? Just one of those massive in the middle of the room. They made them into, like, proper little workbenches here. It looks so much better. It was already a good mod anyway, but the art was always the, the thing that did kind of put me off a little bit. But this is uh, this is genuinely a really, really great improvement here. So we want to put down one of these uh, so that it can connect to every bench. I think we've done a pretty good job of that. We need to make some pulp. We just need to make some, make some pulp to start off with before we do anything else here. So... Um, extract organic pulp from wood. That's that's all it takes. So, doing so, we've got X, and then we'll say X is oh, I don't know, like a hundred should be more than enough, right? I've I've no idea. Let's do two hundred just to be sure. How many does it output? Oh, one. Ten wood makes one pulp. Okay, now that's ridiculous. Then, um, take it down to like. 50. 50. It's 50. Even 50s might be too much. Let's, let's do 40. Um, pause and satisfied. Unpause at, what do you think, like 15 should do it. And then what we'll do is we'll say we'll put a shelf down in here or some sort of storage in this room for pulp for any of the other like genes as well, incubators. Anything like that can go in this room. In fact, we could turn one of these areas into storage. That would make a lot more sense. So let's smash this wall through again. Um, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do that for the time. We'll put some doors down in a minute. Uh, let's use a zone for just storing everything temporarily, and then I'll put down shelves for the area. So clear all. Let's see if there's like a genetics category or something. 
Um, so what were we looking for? We wanted incubators, so that'd be under manufactured one would assume. Genetic materials, hey, that seems like what we're after. So manufactured genetic materials. Boom, there we are. Okay, uh, what does that, uh, what does that include? Incubators, serums, materials. Okay, very nice. Okay, that'll help out quite a lot. And then we wanted, um, pulp. And, uh, I, I think incubators were under that list, but I will just double check because that's the one off the top of my head. Yeah, incubators are good. Um, what else can this lab produce is the real question. I want to make sure it's all convenient, you know, rather than running back and forth over to the other place. Um, so we've got all the various incubators. Those are good. This one makes, I don't know what a paragon ostrich is, but it sounds incredible. So we've got, uh, serums as well. Right, so make sure we are putting down, oh, wow, look at this. So this is where it's expecting the, the, the best genes, I would assume, from these particular animals. Then we're going to breed the best version of that animal. This is cool. I like it. That sounds very, very fun. So let's put that down over here then. So serums uh, are all apparently already included, but I will just double check. Uh, yeah, I think we're good. I think we're actually very good. All right, fine. That, in theory, should be everything we need for the time being until we've got a few more benches. So, what have we got nearby then? What, what animals have we got that we could potentially extract serums from? Um, I've still got a couple of animals here. Uh, are you even my animal? Oh, you are? Zoo holding. Why are you going over there then? Um, <laughs> Rimworld, are we having, a, we having a bad day? We are having a bad day. Okay, fine. We we'll, won't we'll worry about it for the time being. All right. Um, I don't think we've got any animals we can actually extract alpha serums from or anything like that, but... Uh, it means we can't... Oh, there are boomalopes down here, though. I don't know what an alpha boomalope would be, but that sounds incredible. There's a lot of dinosaurs naturally also roaming around here. And then we've also got some alpaca, alpha alpaca. Suddenly I'm on board. Um, okay, so can we can we do that? Let's take a look. Um, so bear, what well, boomalope is actually an option. So let's queue that up. Um, so I guess we'll queue up a few of those. Well, I, I assume we need to kill them, right? You need the, the corpse, the boomalope corpse, right? That makes a lot of sense. Now, we've got to be careful we don't accidentally butcher them in that case. Um... Why don't we, in our infinite wisdom, just turn off the butcher table for the time being? Bear in mind, bear in mind this. I think it's fairly, un uh, you know, don't turn it, yeah, uh, I mean, turn it off or just stop it butchering just in case you can use it manually like an old uh, butcher table. I think it's necessary to butcher anything else. I think we've got enough meat to probably last us quite some time. So now we can actually go out and hunt animals to get their genetic information. So we'll go for these boomalopes here. Sorry, boys. It's time to, time to die. Um, have we got people actually set to hunting as well? We haven't. Right, that was the other thing I thought we'd better check very briefly. Hunter lacks range weapon. That's probably almost fucking everybody. But the people with the range weapons will obviously go and hunt that down. Cool. Okay, that should save us a little bit of time with that then. Glinks is already working on the pulp. Very nice to see. So we can put down some more buildings in a minute. I just want to make a Paragon Boomalope. I don't know what the hell it'll do for us, but it sounds incredible. Um, so it also needs to be at a very specific temperature. Zero and 50 is obviously not very specific at all. Basically, uh, what you can comfortably live in there. So zero and 50 degrees Celsius until genetically modified organism is ready to hatch. Paragon boomalope. I don't know what that means, but it sounds... Obviously, a paragon is like the the, 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 the top of there, or the, the top of that particular thing. You could apply it to a lot of things, I guess. But you'd, you'd assume that paragon boomalope would be the best of the best. So that's what we're going to go for. That, this, is, this is what all this research, all this, all this building... Building up as led to, we're gonna grow ourselves a big boomalope. I am Spleens, and today on Jackass, we're gonna be hunting an innocent animal with a high velocity, high powered rifle intended for military application. Thanks, Spleens, very cool. Um, obviously, not doing a very good job. Is that really the best place to stand? Got to ask. Come on, Glinks. There we go. Nice work. Okay, so I assume we're going to finish it off and then get caught in the explosion, no doubt. Or you guys probably just end up killing one another. Please don't aggro those Dragantelopes. Unless you guys want to die, that seems like a very dangerous thing to do. Oh, God. Working this, it's gonna end. Oh, well, that one's down. Okay, that's something, I guess. Well done. We need one more. Painful. This is painful to watch. This is actually just animal cruelty at this stage. Good work, John. Let's, let's make that paragon. But uh, what's he got there? Stretch it. Can you not just drop that on the? Oh, he's taking it to a stop our bollocks. Um. Okay, this is what we need to prevent as well. Make sure that we haven't got any shelves that are taking the genetic material. Otherwise, it's gonna get very confusing very quickly. Right. So storage. Let's just go genetic uh, materials. None. Okay. Um, shit. Well, this is going to get annoying. John, where, where exactly were you taking that to? This one here, maybe? Um, storage. Genetic materials. There we are. Okay. So some of these apparently can carry them. Some can't. Um, I'm going to manually just go through everything and make sure that only those new areas that we built are capable of holding these. Thank God, we've already finished the research on advanced genetic engineering and we've barely scratched the surface of the regular one. This is great because it means we've got so much to do now. Um, so I'm also going to queue up then the Paragon Boomalope Incubator. Now we need a good storage area for incubators to make sure that they are going to be constantly at a very set, very specific temperature. So I'm thinking... 
Um, to be honest, that should be anywhere in the base should be fine with that. But I'm gonna quickly cordon off an area maybe over here, um, just for incubators. Because bear in mind, when the animals hatch, we will still need to be very careful of them. So, you know, let's, let's turn this room into a little incubator. So that way we've got a way to, we, we can obviously vent the heat out here or into this room if we feel like it. Just to ensure that is a constant, I'll fill it with heaters and coolers. So that we've got a constant nice 25 degrees or something like that. Seeing as that's the midpoint of the temperatures. Um, yeah, let's get a couple of auto doors on that as well. So we're not losing fat. Let's, let's also vacuum seal it. So let's put in like a little airlock style entrance zone as well. Um, structure, and then let's also go for any, any auto door is fine in this area, not too bothered by that. There we are. Okay, um, in fact, we could, there's no reason we can't do that three layers thick. Fuck it, why not? So that way, they're gonna move through, and that should keep the heat in, and then we also need, uh, cooler? Is there any coolers nearby? Uh, that'll do. Right, so let's build a copy of that one. So that's venting heat currently out of the lab into this room, which isn't particularly ideal, I will admit. So what we really want to do is replace these, because obviously this used to be an outside wall. Rinsed all these here. Because this one actually does have a way to the outside. Uh, so let's go ahead and move those over. And then replace those with vents. Now a lot of you keep shouting at me, please use in-wall vents. Completely agree. Just a force of habit, really, from not playing. Obviously, in-wall vents not being base game. Let's get that done as soon as possible. All right, ingredients for this one. We need one empty incubator, two organic pulp, which I'm sure we must have a load of by now. Do we have any more organic pulp just sort of kicking around over here? We do. Look at that. Um, five of them. Why are you there? Why, why are you allowed in this stockpile? Organic... Oh, it counts just manufactured. That's a bit boring. Okay, so let's make sure that none of those are in here as well. So that's all of that one done. And now if we quickly haul that one urgently, hopefully one of the hauling bots will take that down to the bottom uh, stockpile that we built in the genetics lab. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Tallman, I need to see if this is actually set up properly. Oh, I might just get John to do it. John, oh, he's researching. You know what, John? I'm sorry. I need you to come and uh, prioritize merging chemistry. No, I want you to move this stuff. No? Oh, I guess someone's already on it then? I'll keep a close eye on it and sort of see where that ends up. But then all we need to build after that is just the incubator itself. So, um, what was it we built that again? Honestly, don't remember. Uh, this one? Yeah, there we go. Manufacture empty incubator. So, that would do for that one. And then we need to... Oh, non-specialized genes. What is that for? You just create alpha hybrids. Ah, oh, okay, cool. They could be probably using a gene recombine to turn them into more useful genetic material. Oh, wow, that's cool. From a dinosaur? Oh, that's also really cool as well. Dinosauria patch, yeah, of course. I wonder if Storicosaurus are Dinosauria or if they are the Jurassic Park mod. So not all of the mods that we've got going on right now have patches to use with genetic room. Obviously, there's a lot of complexity to that with the amount of crossbreeds and hybrids and stuff. So it's kind of to be expected here. Manufacture, should we do that until X, where X is 10? And then we'll say unpause when we've only got five of the damn things left. That way, we've also got a nice, always got a nice stock of that. We've always got a nice stock of organic pulp. Really, I should say extract, have all of these set to extract permanently. Or maybe do until we've got X on these, and then with these ones, do until we've got X, where X is like, um, oh, sorry, on... Uh, this one. Yeah, do X on these where X is like five, so that way we've always got genes coming in there as well. I think this could work. It's, it's going to take a lot of it. It's, it's going to be a fairly confusing thing to set up here, but in between episodes, I think I'll try and get a nice, a nice automated system set up so that we've always got a certain amount of each particular um, resource. What I might also want to do is go to, say this for example, get all of the potential combination animals, so bears, chickens, cats, uh, rabbits, wolves, whatever else, and actually build a specific freezer for them, maybe next door to this, so that we've got somewhere to store our our actual genetic material. That's actually a good idea, Brian. Nice one. Rather than them having to go to the other side of the friggin' base all the time. So we do our sort of airlock style doors. It's complete overkill, but it just looks nice, so that's why I'm rolling with it. Oh yeah, okay. So we've got, uh, this will be for our incubators, and this will be for our freezer. And that way, in fact, we can even prevent putting heaters in this room by just having coolers vent air into this one and then have them that cooling to 21 degrees. So that one's freezing. Take the, the heat from the freezer room into this one and then dump the heat from this one into this room. Vent it out through into the outside world. This is going to be pretty good when it's finished. It's going to take a long time for me to set up in between episodes because it's going to be a lot of just like literally me doing this and then doing TLX and then details and then pause and satisfy. Blah, 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 blah. But hopefully you can sort of see that this will allow us to basically automate the process a little bit more. That way if there's ever, if we have a fancy, you know what, today I want to I want a thrombo, uh, a thrombo story Rickasaurus hybrid. We can do that. Poor old Trashy. Poor old Trashy must be fearing for his poor life at this stage. So you are working on the empty incubator. Right, okay. So we actually might be able to get... I want to at least start this ready for tomorrow then. And you're going to dump that in there, hopefully. Very good. Okay. So what do we need now then? Just the two organic pulp, right? Which I think someone should be moving over. If we are, please. Take your, take your time. That's fine. Um, did I even say organic pulp was allowed over here? Maybe that's part of the problem. Organic... Yeah, I did. Okay. Um... Just give them some time. I'm sure they'll move it over. 
All right, here we go. John's going to start mixing our, our what was it called again? Paragon. Paragon Boomalope. I think this is a horrible idea. Maybe we can use it as some sort of weapon. Get like a Paragon Boomalope breeding program. Because bear in mind, with the... Uh, so this is this is where things get really complicated and the mods really start crossing over somewhat. We could use the genome research that we've done for with the uh, with the evolved arm. Uh, although the evolved organs mod and, and these uh, questionable genetics mods. Or is it questionable? Questionable ethics, that's it. We can actually use that rather than go through this whole cycle again. When we've got a successful prototype animal, we can, uh, we can extract the genome from it and just put it through a clone vat instead which means we'd be able to use a different mod to grow more copies of it at which point we could use like the uh the animal oh god look at the way those doors have tiled holy shit okay that's awful um we could use one of the other mods to is it gonna do it on that side as well sorry i'm gonna keep it close on it i don't know why it's done that. that's so shit okay let's get those moved or maybe just reinstalled okay let's just reinstall them for the timing What's the point when you use many other mods to, to buff them up? So, like, we've got the ar animal armor mod, so we can make armored explosive. Wouldn't be much point, I guess, I guess unless you want to send out shrapnel or something. But an armored explosive boomalope with, with all sorts of prosthetics and things like that. This is where all these mods are really going to start playing nicely, and this is where the, the sort of real density of, of a mod pack like this will come in. That. There we go. That's pretty good. We've got we've got our first little dinosaur area. So you enter your, your viewing dome there. You stand there. You look at your dinosaurs, uh, do dinosaur things like... Sleep in the sleep in the river. That's fine. Nothing to worry about. Does that count as actual water? Then? So I assume we can't now build on this. Oh, it's just like a floor rather than now. Interestingly enough, does it also count as water for the purposes of this mod? It might do. It's kind of hard to tell because there's a lot of underground water there. We'll have to test it by building some over here. But yeah, that's very cool. That's that's really nice. So the animals uh the animals have their little enclosure there. Of course, we've also done the the muffalopes there as well. Try and get that done with the rest of the animals over the course of tomorrow. But of course, we had a lot of building to do in regards to the secret little research lab. But our genetic stuff, we are well on track. This is what's out pretty goddamn well. I'm going to leave this one here for today, and thank you very much for watching. You guys will have to let me know when you think we should call this series. Obviously, I do want to build the Archotech Massive Centipede at some stage. That will be the end game. That, I think, will just give us, like, the, uh, the remote. Congratulations, you win screen. Very similar to, like I said, to uh, taking off in a spaceship or something like that. What is going on with these doors? I think I need to do a lot of, uh, I need to do a lot of fiddling until we fix these. But in the meantime, let's, uh, let's call it there for today. Pretty happy with that one. Thank you all for watching. And more importantly, thank you to the insane top tier level patrons for making this series possible in the first place. A big thank you goes out to AnnW, Alchemia, Anthony Golia, Suna Kirito, Atmosis, Average Gamer 419, Bacon Kitten, Ben Hofflin, Chesty, Croesus, Donald, Doolin of Gondolin, Fakuna Vasquez, Ghost of Protocol, Gogolus, Harik, James Shea, Jimbo, Jonah Waters, Justin Wallace, Kanan Carter, Michael Mullen, My Name Isn't Dio, Muskratful, Naposcus 911, Necrofilm, Pelvis Presley, Rodin, Richard Clark, Scott, Skaz, Smeg Mustaine, Somnus, the Forsaken One, Tibet Cruz, Tom Terry 18, Tyler Kendall, Tyler McClam, Vacuous Backers, Void Prince Kibo, William Green, and Zazzy 7011. Thank you guys all for your support at the insane tier levels on Patreon. If you guys, if, if anyone new, by the way, has backed or if you've backed on any of the tiers of Patreon over the past couple of days, just bear in mind I've been away for a few days. So I'll, I'll try and get those lists updated for tomorrow's episodes. I'll, I'll have to come through my emails and sort of see what happened with that. But thank you guys for your support regardless. I know a couple of new people did turn up while I was away. Appreciate that quite a lot, especially given that obviously I was away and not actually doing as many videos as I normally do. In the meantime, a big thank you as well to Uwu Daddy, Astro, Ad in Person, Andrew Walsh, Andrew Wilson, Anka, Attila, Austin Taylor, Baldoon, Ben Trope, Buen Gunn, Betamus Max, Better Valerian, Black Double H, Chris, Corgi Circus, Corey C.A., David Van Diepen, Don, Dunk Hunter 2 and 7, Emerald Beam, Exploded Knees, Gaz, Genji Circus, Gothamo, Grey, Haji Dumar, Icarus, Ice of the Grey, Ida C., Jackson P., Jay Lara, Jacob Wolfie, James Barnes, Jason Sushu, Jose, Jeebus Crust, Yoran DeVries, Jordan Campbell, Joseph Beer, Justin Plot, Justin Walters, Luan Thomas, Luke Wallace, Mustolp, Monty, Mosey, Sampson, Nathan Flores, Nathaniel Limburg, Nostris, Nick, Noah Gallimor, Organized Confusion, Pan Samu, Pantherpel, Payback137, Peyton Denisar, Russian Oligarch Billionaire, Ryan Hooper, Sagatair, Sam Keir, Shari, Smartworm, Smooth, Octopus, Soikruti, Super Nanny 089, The Insane Pickle, The One Ring, Volonkari, Varagon, Voodoo Mambo, Will Wade, Wilson Atef, Wolfie, Yorkus, Zach, and Zico2. Thank you guys all for your support over at Patreon. See you guys all tomorrow for, I mean, apparently the end game of the Genetics Tech Mod, given the, the speed at which we're going through this one.